Hey guys, this is Dave Nagomoto. Today I'll be talking about our 2017 EcoBoost Swap ND Miata. Obviously the star of the show here is the 2.3 EcoBoost. So this is out of a basically two EcoBoost Mustang or Focus RS or whatever. Uh, Bronco, Ranger, they're in a million things. Um, but this is primarily Mustang. Uh, so intake manifold, actual block configuration, and the manual transmission is all out of the Mustang. On dyno, this car made about 440 horsepower and about 400 foot-pound of torque. Um, that's on its like medium setting. On high setting with actually our other motor that we have for this car, which is a ported head setup, uh, we made 508 horsepower and almost 500 foot-pound of torque which was really too much because at the time we were on 245s and it just blew the tires off in almost every gear. Um, but we also have a low config, uh, which makes about 300, which is really manageable and what we often run it on. Um, so to make all this power, it is a just rods, pistons, normal 2.3 EcoBoost motor, heads normal, cams are normal, and we have a uh, German twin scroll manifold, which makes it external wastegate. And it is on a G25 660 turbo, um, which right now on the non-ported head, we're on 24 pounds to make 440 horsepower. With our ported head setup, we're normally on 18 pounds to make 440 horsepower, which is pretty good. And torque comes in almost immediately. It actually spools just as fast as an OEM turbo size without the terrible fall off up top like you normally get. So to go with this engine package and all that stuff, we obviously made our own motor mounts in house, uh, which is all, we basically put the whole motor in, in, in CAD, in a 3D scan of the entire car, whole scan of the motor and transmission, and we popped it in there, put it exactly where it needs to be. So actually with this whole motor engine combo, you don't have to do anything with the firewall itself or trimming or anything. So it's, a, it's really nice and normal. So to go along with this whole two, three EcoBoost swap stuff, um, we had to make obviously custom aluminum boost tubing to go to our Gomoto PWR uh, intercooler. So that whole intercooler setup is really, really efficient and really, really tiny. Um, we originally had a Mishimoto intercooler, which like they're generic, took up the entire grill. It was like almost 20 pounds and it did a terrible job. We had like 180 degree IETs. And then whenever we switched to our PWR intercooler, we actually jumped down almost 40 degrees IET and it weighed about, I think we have eight pounds less than the Mishimoto one, which was wonderful. So for packaging wise, it's great. Um, another thing with this setup that we're running, just, you don't have to, but our setup that's making 440 is on full E85. Um, so we have to run uh, the XDI, high pressure fuel pump and then their 2000 cc injectors which has been really wonderful we actually have their uh, 60 pump which is why we can run up to 500 horsepower with these on ethanol so another thing to go with the whole EcoBoost kit stuff for the nd miata is we have a custom cnc clutch adapter which these cars are really complicated for whatever reason with their clutch master cylinder it actually is a plastic master cylinder that you just simply click into place and then the pedal has no physical bolts or anything it is also a plastic clip which makes it really hard to reproduce to put a say willwood master cylinder in there to make the mt82 internal slave work um, so we made a cnc part that actually does just like oem click into place and another cnc part to go on the tip of that willwood master to also click into place just like oem which is really cool and that master cylinder should last the lifetime of the car. It's serviceable, unlike the factory Mazdas, and you can adjust your pedal, unlike the factory Mazdas. So very happy to produce and sell that part to everybody. Um, another thing with this car is all the suspension stuff that we have. Uh, so this is on two-way remote reservoir MCSs, and then full car steps, uh, front sway bar and rear sway bar. Um, they did a really great job helping us out setting up all the MCSs, uh, getting us figured out with our spring rate stuff. And if we had any questions, we went to them. They were a really good, good source for us 
Um, and this car has almost eight inches of suspension travel. The droop travel's insane, the bump travel's insane. It's a really great handling setup. Another cool thing about all the suspension stuff on this car is with the extra power, um, we were actually having the rear hubs or rear wheels squirm around on, on acceleration. So I guess whenever you triple the torque or something, it just happens to do that. So we had to do full SPL, basically the entire catalog. Uh, their rear press and sphericals, as well as all of their rear arms. And that stopped all the weird squirming that happened under acceleration with this car. Um, so we actually don't have a single bushing on this entire thing, which makes it very planted, very stable, very direct, which is quite nice. So to cope with all the extra power that we have on this car, we do have 17 by 10 apexes, as well as 285 squared Vitors, um, which makes this car grip up really, really well mechanically and it is the max width for our class. But it did take a little bit of massaging for the quarters and for the fenders to make it work. It's actually a lot harder to make a 285 fit in the back than the front, which is kind of funny. Um, but we do have all this stuff available on the website. It is obviously all manageable in stock body, although it is a bit of a challenge, but if you have any questions about it, please just let us know. We don't mind helping out knowledge wise. Um, another thing we have on this car is AP brakes on the front and then some Willwood competition brakes in the rear. So this car is oftenly hitting 150 plus mile an hour on our local track and also some national tracks we go to. Um, so we really needed some reliable, consistent stopping power to be, consi to be competitive with the rest of the field that we race with. Um, we've had great longevity with the massive stopping times that we've done. We pulled almost 2G of braking on this car with the new front arrow edition which has been kind of mind blowing. I just didn't think it'd be even a possibility with a normal production based car, but it's cool to see. But moving on to all the aero shenanigans, um, we just recently did a whole setup with various engineering. They were very kind to help us out on our uh, project. So they originally had a high efficiency aero kit, which is for, you know, makes sense. Stock Miata, they make 160 horsepower. Um, so they didn't want to have a very drag inducing aero kit. So since we were like, hey, we're making almost triple, a little bit more than triple the stock power, we don't care about the drag. We just want to have as much downforce as we possibly can. And they were like, you know what? We'll help you out. We'll see what we can do. So we have a custom design splitter from them. Um, we have their off the shelf canards for the ND and we have their massive V1X carbon rear wing so this whole setup at 100 miles an hour makes around 700 uh, pounds of downforce and obviously aero is exponential. So around 150, I think we're making around estimate like 1200 pounds of downforce. I was told by Eric over at Varus to make my mounts hold 700 pounds for the rear wing and to hold 700 pounds for the front wing. So that is exactly what we did. And I'm just, I'm following the rules, but we have been able to FEA everything and make sure everything will withstand that. We've gone 150 plus mile an hour. Nothing has fallen off luckily. And it's been really impressive how much the air actually does make a difference. Um, uh, a cool thing that we're kind of doing in-house as well is with the help of Varus, we were able to route um, some foam insulation and wrap that in carbon fiber. So we basically made a very 3D, um, splitter, you know, with internal ramps and internal structure and all that stuff. So like, as we showed in the beginning clip, I guess, you can step anywhere along this splitter and it doesn't do anything but flex our frame. Uh, but our mounts and our splitter can withstand all of it without any splitter mounts. And as we'll show in the pictures, there's only a singular quick release point on this. So you can easily just clip it out, clip it in, it's no big deal. It's been pretty awesome. We're very excited to show the full test results with all the arrow stuff. Um, see how much of a difference it truly makes uh, time-wise. Just to showcase our FEA mounts, obviously I'm a measly like 140 pounds, but you can jump on and do whatever you need to do with all of our arrow attachment points. They're truly 700 pound rated. We had three people on the front of this car without any flex earlier, which was pretty freaking cool to see. Um, but these are all custom made by us. The position is from Varus to keep our aero balance in check, but 
the actual mounts we created in-house. So it is 5083 3 thick aluminum plates that we plasma cut and drilled to size, but it is welded to the frame with some little adapter plates. So it is all chassis mounted front and rear, as good as it can get. Another cool part about this car, which is a little more race car than it needs to be, but is we have a radium 14 gallon fuel cell in here. So we have our quick fill in the factory location, which I just find cool. Um, but we just did the fuel cell to where we can run the car as low as possible on fuel and not worry about the longevity of ethanol in our tank. Uh, we've had some corrosion issues in the past with ethanol in factory tanks. We just wanna bypass that as well as our weight distribution with a full tank, which is helpful for our autocrossing we do and the, getting the weight on the rear tire is about 52 rear bias. Um, whenever we have a full tank of fuel. So, you know, normally on big track, we're about 50-50 whenever we have no fuel, but for that, it is cool. You can fill it up and get a bunch of rear traction. So moving on to the interior stuff, um, we kind of kept it relatively race car basic on this car. Um, we have carbon Sparco seats, which hold us in place and all that good stuff. We have a Ford Performance Sparco steering wheel to kind of make people giggle um, and then uh, AIM MXG dash with our uh, 3D printed bezel, which holds it in place. It looks like OEM. It's a really cool little setup and it, it helps us a lot with alarms and data logging. We're trying to make ourselves better as well as keep track of all of our progression with the car as we keep changing everything and seeing if we're actually getting faster or if it's just whatever. It's nice to keep track of. Um, on the interior of this car as well, we have a suede wrap dash with the infotainment screen deleted. It was just something annoying that I didn't like, so it was something we wanted to implement. So it makes it very slick looking and fancier in my opinion, because we have a nice you know, dash to go with it. Um, as well as on the interior, we have a factory located shifter, which is our custom shift kit from MGW for the MT82. So with the whole swap kit, that'll be included with it. Uh, it puts the shifter in the factory location. There's no cutting needed and it's shifts. It's one of my favorite transmission feels uh, compared, we've driven a lot of cars and T56s, tier 660s. This is definitely up there. And it's also been taking the abuse for about three years of 400 plus foot pound of torque and doing clutch dumps and autocross launches and big track, and it doesn't have a cooler. We just keep beating the crap out of it. MT82 in this car has been wonderful. We can't, can't be happier. So to go with the high flowing, higher horsepower stuff that we have to deal with, this is a full custom three inch exhaust from turbo all the way to the tip. Um, so it's a stainless downpipe with a titanium, basically right after the downpipe all the way to the tip of the car. And we saved a lot of weight with this. I think it was around Shoot, I think it was 15 pounds of weight savings from our original stainless exhaust. It sounds really good, doesn't weigh anything. It looks really pretty as you'll see in the pictures here soon. And then another thing we did, which was pretty fun, is since we moved the fuel cell to the back, we had a lot of room underneath the car uh, with the factory fuel tank removed. And so we put both of our aux coolers right there for our differential and for our oil cooler. So there's a lot of free room and you don't normally get that on a Miata. So it was fun to fill those those voids. We're planning on making some 3D printed ducts to go to those two coolers, kind of help out with everything. So as you can see, all the underbracing underneath the car, this was the very, very first EcoBoost swapped Miata that we've had. Um, so we did learn in the process, obviously. Uh, this is a one-off of mounting our MT82 transmission, but we'll show some pictures of uh, what we came up with in the ladder through the testing of this car. Uh, that was much better and easier um, end product, which we'll have in our EcoBoost swap kit. So this pretty much concludes our EcoBoost swapped ND Miata. If you guys have any more questions, please let us know in our little comments or social media stuff. Be sure to follow us and subscribe and all that good stuff just to kind of keep up with the evolution of all our in-house race cars, customer race cars, see all the new stuff we keep coming out with. Thanks.